I'm starting the recording because I'm starting the session. So thank you for being here. Uh, thank you very much. I am Cristina Fosas. For those of you who don't know me, I am the immediate past district director. I belong to Toastmasters uh, Vitoria Gasteiz. Vitoria Gasteiz is a city, is the capital city of the Basque country in the north of Spain. And I've been at Toastmasters for eight years now not that long if you think in terms of time but i have done a lot of things since i started my well my career as it were in the leadership uh, track a long long time ago um i i want to talk about speechcraft that is a tool it's a program that Toastmasters has, uh, that has different purposes. The first purpose, of course, is to become a DTM. <laughs> so if we want to become DTMs at the end of our tracks, one of the things that we need to do is either a speechcraft or a youth leadership program or being a mentor or a, or a coach for a club. So that is one of the things that, well, that the, of the tools that Toastmasters uh, has for us. But I discovered along the way that it is not only use, useful for ourselves, for ourselves, uh, for our personal training, but also powerful tools for our clubs. And I'm telling you this because in my club, I belong to a, not a big club, it's a, 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 I'm going to say a normal club with every year struggles. Every year we go down to 16, 18 members, and then we need to grow again the club. And by the end of the year, we are around 25 to 26. And then in September, we go back to 16 members again. I guess, like in most of your cases. And we had never tried the speech craft before. But last year, because of the pandemic, as we were stuck at home, we decided to try this new thing. It's not new, but it was new for us. And what happened was that we not only put a bunch of members into the club, but it also helped us uh, to create a different spirit within our members, especially the older members. It helped with the cohesion of the club, with the mood of the club, and some of the members that we thought were lost, <laughs> of the old members that we thought were lost, came back for the speech craft and stayed with us. And this is why I say it's a powerful tool for the club. It's not only because it helps us put new members, but also because it helps us retrieve and recover <laughs> the older members that are a bit lost on the way. So what is this speech craft about? It's a program that we can do in four, six, or eight weeks. So it depends on us, it depends on the leader of the program, whether we do it in six weeks or in eight weeks, in one month or in two months. Well, not, not weeks, but sessions. So we can do the speech craft having two sessions per week, for instance. Okay, so it's four sessions or eight sessions. Today, for the speech craft, there is an online version of it with exactly the same uh, the same structure, either four sessions, six sessions, or eight sessions. What do we need to do? The first thing we need to do is to find out if we are eligible to lead a speech craft. So if you are a Toastmasters in good, in good standing, most surely you will be eligible 
for leading a speechcraft. But this is something you do very easily. You go online, you go to speechcraft in Toastmasters, so it's toastmasters.org slash speechcraft. And there you can find out whether you are eligible or not. And then uh, I am going to structure this presentation chronologically. So starting from the beginning, uh, you first check out if you're eligible, then you purchase the program. It is not expensive, it's around 50 euros. The good part is that you can charge the participants for the speech craft. What means, for instance, in our club, what we did last year was I purchased the program, the club paid me uh, the 50 euros, and then we charged the participants in the program five euros for their participation. We are charging for the training because it's a training for them. And uh, well, five euros is like a symbolic amount of money. So they are committed to attend the, the sessions, they are committed to participate, and also we give them a diploma at the end, the official uh, speechcraft diploma. So because you can charge for it, I believe it's not expensive because you, of course, can uh, balance the amount that you spend with the amount that you get from charging from the program. Then uh, you usually want to plan this event with a little bit of time, a more or less one month before you want to start the event. And because you want to have time to gather your team, to plan for your sessions and to promote the program. Uh, in our case, we didn't do a lot of promotion. We just used the well, our social media. We have a Facebook page and we have an Instagram account, and this is what we used. It was very simple with some, uh, you know, graphics and all this stuff uh, posted on Facebook and on Instagram, and some of the members of our club reposting the information to their accounts and trying to, well, exactly like in a demo meeting, trying to gather some people to get into the into the program. Then um, we need to assign the different volunteer roles. And it's important because the speech craft is a program that even though it's coordinated by just one person, it has to imply and, and involve everybody, well, not everybody, but a team of people in the club. Meaning that one is leading, but there will be a person uh, in charge of two or more uh, guests. And <laughs> it's, uh, they have like a role, they are like their guides, uh, you will need people for the different sessions, people for being the Toastmaster, people for, become, for being the improvisation manager, exactly like in a Toastmasters meeting. So every single role needs to be done by a different person. And exactly like in a Toastmasters meeting, we need to know that beforehand so we can send the agendas and plan carefully and thoroughly for, for everything. Uh, also, the speech craft implies, not always, but if you want to spice it a little bit, in every single session, you have a special speech given by a special guest. It can be a workshop, like a short workshop, 15 to 20 minutes or shorter. In our case, we what we what we did is that we invited one of our older speakers of the veteran members in our club to do these workshops. So they became very, very involved and engaged 
with a speechcraft. And it was something that was nice. Uh, regarding the technology, there is really nothing we can, well, nothing special that we need. <laughs> As you can imagine today, we are basically, or basically everyone is used to doing things online. So there is nothing really weird. Uh, the program itself, in my opinion, works a little bit, and it's more use, usable than um, Pathways. So to me, it was really easy to use and nothing strange. And I have no comments about technology other than the, logis the usual logistics, right? The good light, good camera, and so on and so forth. Once we have everything, sometime before the event, like 48 hours or 72 hours, we need to confirm the session details and we need to do it online because as Speechcraft is, do, is online, everything we do needs to be done online and needs to be verified online. And we need to log the session details. Instead of doing a regular agenda, we can log the agenda online. During the event, like I said, you can conduct it in uh, four, six, or eight sessions. Depending on the sessions, you will have a program or a different program. For instance, in the full uh, eight sessions uh, program, you have an icebreaker, a get to the point, an organize your speech, uh, your body speaks, vocal variety, and how to say speeches. Plus, I introduce a speaker and evaluate the speaker's speeches. Like everybody needs to think about um, and give their speeches about these topics. But if you choose the four week track, instead of getting to your body speaks or your vocal variety speak, uh, speech, you will only have the basics like the real basics, like the get to the point, organize your speech thing, etc. Uh, important, whenever you feed a person that is a guest finishes their speech craft and they want to become those master's members, they are awarded the level one, the pathways level one. So they don't need to do again <laughs> the icebreaker and all of that. Yes. Um, well, the event goes, la goes like this in a nice way, one week, uh, the second week, the third week. In our case, we did it in four weeks. And because we didn't want to overload our calendars and our schedules, we did it in, uh, we devoted the month of March this year to uh, doing a speech craft. So instead of having our regular sessions, those masters meetings, we did the speech craft, speech craft itself. In other clubs, what they do is they decide to do the speech craft in different days of the week, for instance, on Saturday mornings or any other day that you like. So either you choose to do it at the same time of your sessions or instead of your sessions or uh, in another date. Um, whenever the speech craft is finished, <laughs> okay, now you have done your, your training and in the very last session, there is a moment and there is a special moment that is marked on the agenda because the Agendas for the speech craft are very uh, unflexible, I would say. Very, very, very marked with all the points that we need to include, etc. One of the points that is included in the very last day is the moment for remembering the guests that they should uh, join Toastmasters if they enjoyed the training. In our case, we got two guests to become members, which was nice. We would have loved to have more because we did the speech craft for six people, but 
oh well uh, we understand that this is not probably or this was not probably the best time for them however it's not just about the members that we put into our club that's important but it, remember that it's also about the cohesion of the of the older members of the club and of the commitment of all the members of the club so if we have 50 members which usually only seven or eight come to the meetings regularly and after the speech craft you have 13 members that come to the meetings regularly you have acquired five members for your club for your sessions which in our case was one of the most amazing things that <laughs> that happened and that we discovered in our way yes so um regarding the materials everything is provided by those masters and it's provided by those masters in a, a digital way every document everything is online and is online regardless of them being those masters or not i mean their participation in the speechcraft is related to their email so they can log in into those masters speechcraft and they have uh, access to that website for a period of time after that <laughs> unless they become members they lose all the information that's fair enough i guess um and we as those masters don't need to do anything special so everything for us is smooth and as we get more and more used to using pathways uh, dealing with the technology is not that uh, problem any longer so it's uh, it's okay as for the different uh, roles that we need in the sessions well i was talking before we need guides guides for the members that join the speech craft uh, the ideal is that every guest has a guide but i guess it's exactly like in a club every new member has a mentor hasn't it <laughs> well in some cases some mentors the ideal is one mentor one member but in some cases some mentors have more than one member because we don't have enough mentors or because we have a lot of new members sometimes it happens in this case it's a little bit the same if we can have one uh, guide per guest that's the ideal thing if not try not to overload anyone and go for a maximum of two two guests their guide. Um, we also need a general evaluator for every session, a topics master, well, that of course, speakers, one speaker, I was saying, the one that introduces the, the theme, the topic of the week, because the rest of the speeches, it's going to be them, the participants doing the speeches, and usually it's going to be us evaluating the speeches. And another very interesting thing that we can that can help our clubs is that we can personalize and customize the speech craft as, as we wish so in our club we did things in a way but in other clubs i know that things are not done like we did in my club uh let me speak myself so in my club we did it in our during our regular sessions uh, we had a guest speaker that was speaking about one of the topics of the topic of the week but in some of the clubs i know that they do like a regular workshop like a long one like one hour workshop about presentations or one hour workshop about uh, speech structures or speech writing itself that depends on on you that depends on your club that depends your, on your possibilities if you have someone in your club in, uh, someone around that can give this type of speeches that's good if you believe that's going to be good for your club or for the people that are attending the speech craft good for you go for it 
Same thing for the time. In our case, we did the speedcraft sessions more or less in the same amount of time of, an, of a regular meeting, but the speechcraft sessions can go from 45 minutes to two hours or even more. It depends on what you decide. You can tailor your agenda as you wish. If you have more guests, you can schedule more speeches. If you have more guests, you can schedule more speeches in less time, meaning they don't have to do five to seven speech, uh, minute speeches, but maybe three to four minute speeches and then have more of those <laughs> and have time for the evaluations. I mean, it's up totally up to you. We can clearly customize the way we want to do it. But the most important thing, in my opinion, of all of them are the reasons behind doing a speech prep. And it's always a why. Why do you want to do this program? Do you want to do this program because you want to attract more members into your club by doing it? Perfect. That's the goal. That's the vision. That's what you need to share uh, with a, a common share with the team that is going to organize the speech craft. And of course, you don't need to tell the guests that that's your purpose in life to have them in uh, to have them as a members, but it's going to be behind everything you do. Uh, if you do it for other reasons, because you want to become a DTM, and this is the only thing that that's uh, between you and your DTM, that's a good reason as well. Why not? This is one of the programs that Toastmasters has for us. But everybody needs to be aware that you are doing this only for the reason of becoming a DTM. At the end of the day, exactly like in any other team activity, we need to engage our team first. If our team is engaged and everybody's rowing in the same direction, we will achieve whatever goals we have in mind. If our goal is to have fun together, I'm certain that we will have fun together. If the goal is whatever goal we fix and we set for the speedcraft, make sure that it's shared with the team that is involved. Like I was saying before, in the case of the Victoria State House Masters that we did, uh, the speechcraft program in March. It helped for the club cohesion. It helped for the club motivation. Like I was saying, members that didn't show up in a long, long time started showing up since we did the speechcraft and were very motivated to start talking again about organizing your speech and things that were a little bit forgotten. It's not that they are forgotten, you know, but in a sense they are. Um, it helped us grow, of course, and it gave us a vision about the organization. It gave us a vision about those masters as well, because most of the people in the club didn't know that doing a speech craft was one of the requirements for becoming a DTM, and now they know. So I, I believe that there are all advantages about doing speech crafts in your clubs. Um, this is pretty much what I have to say, but we have time, a lot of time, in fact, for questions. So I'm happy to answer. Feel free to unmute yourselves if you want. One question, Christina. Yes. Is there any difference between the typical traditional paper speech craft program or, and the online one, or it's the same 
in a different no. um, yeah, it's pretty much the same in a different setup. Yes. Okay. You, okay. So you can do in the. I have it here, in fact. Yeah. Because so, no, I have a look to, to the paper one. Yes. Years, and I, I was curious. It, it has been different. It is no, no, no. It's basically the same. It's basically the, exactly the same thing. So the only difference is that you have the things. Yeah. Online. Or, or, and, or and, it's, <laughs> and it's. Uh, if while we are doing things in a hybrid setup, I don't know in your clubs, in my club, we are starting little by little to move to a hybrid setup, yeah. but we have been online for two years. Yeah, 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 yeah. the so, same here. So taking into account that most of the people are still only online, mm -hmm. this is way easier because you don't have to touch anything. Yeah. You don't have to send them anything. Yeah. It's everything is done online. No, no, I was thinking because um, I, I have the, the idea to go to a hub of companies and so on to propose something. So to prepare the proposal, let's say, and on the paper, and then, yeah, we can go online if, if it moves uh, ahead. Thank it you very much for sharing all those experiences. You're welcome, Marisa, please. Uh, Soleil. Yeah, um, first of all, thank you very much for your sharing. This was very helpful. Um, I have one question. So you say after finishing the speed craft program, this, the guests will, uh, if they become a Toastmaster, then they can um, like, as, as finish the, the first level um, in pathway, um, but as far as I know, uh, to finish the, the first level, then you have to finish three or four speeches. So I, I don't know uh, how many speeches did the, the guests in your program finish um, and how is it equal to the level one? It is not, thank you for your question. It's not exactly the same thing, but when you finish, so it depends on the number of sessions that you're that your speechcraft has. In our case, we did a four session speechcraft and all of the guests did four speeches, one per week. In the programs that are six weeks or six sessions, they probably will do six speeches. So yes, they do <laughs> the amount of speeches required for, the, for a level one, let's say, but that's mm -hmm. one of the perks that has for a guest to become a Toastmasters after the, after the speech craft is that they have already convalidated, let's say, le the level one. So yeah. they don't have to start from scratch because they have just already done their, their uh, icebreaker, the second level uh, yeah. speech, etc. So yeah. that means in one session you you organize uh, like six speech repair speeches. Yes. Okay. Because they are shorter. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. So, like I was saying before, it's a little bit on you and how to organize how you organize your agenda, but uh, the speech craft program allows you to shorten the length of the speeches given by the guests. Yeah. Meaning that they don't have to deliver five to seven minute speeches, but only three to four or three to five minutes. So you can handle more than the usual speeches that you have in a meeting, of course. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Anabella. Yes. Thank you. I was taking some notes. <laughs> Christina, thank you for your experience. And um, I think your experience that, that you are sharing with us in your club is really encouraging. And I have a question. Uh, do you think that this speechcraft is a good program to start a new club? To start a new club? Mm. Yes, meaning if you, we have a, um, a group of people that are interested in, the, in a, have a new club, 
and we can do a demo session or we can go there sometimes or even if it is a corporate uh, um, club do you think starting with the speech craft is a good way to 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 do mm -hmm. it okay so the thing is if you start a new club from scratch uh you can't do a speech craft because you need to be at those masters beforehand and in, I would say you need to be a little bit, a little bit experienced. I, I'm not saying that you need to be a DTM or having any title or anything before, but you need to have a little bit of, of experience because you're teaching others. <laughs> it, this is not like, a, like in a regular meeting where we don't have any, any teachers, but in a speech craft, you're kind of, or, or you are setting up the agenda and, and well, in some cases you are uh, introducing a guest speaker who acts kind of uh, like a teacher. So in this way, you would need someone from another club guiding the speech craft and organizing yes. the speech craft for this new group. Yes. But, yes, why not? Yes. Yes, this was my idea to have a group, a team of uh, um, older uh, Toastmasters from other clubs that yeah. to gathering a team to help a new club to rise up and to born from this. Yes, could be. Yes, yes. I understand, could be. Yes, yes, I see it. Yes, do you yes, and they, then they get the basics, and when they start the club, some of them at least they start with the level one already done which is yeah. good and a little bit of experience about how to evaluate uh, how things work how a meeting works how to do a table topic session etc that's also interesting okay thank you thank you you're welcome any more questions Anything like, yeah, Josh. Well, Christina, thank you very much for sharing with us uh, your experience uh, with the Speechcraft. Thank you very much. I have uh, uh, one question related with the cost. You spoke about the 50 euros about the, the program and that, uh, and that you charged uh, five euros to each participant uh, of the Speechcraft. Um, I feel that perhaps five euros uh, could seem uh, something too cheap to sell it, uh, and I explain myself. Uh, it could be uh, looked uh, as something not uh, interesting. And if we charge a little bit more, I don't know, 25, 50 euros, it might be, uh, it might pass the idea that is something more uh, valuable at the end. Uh, are we allowed to charge uh, this, uh, this value? And perhaps at the end, if uh, the participants uh, want to stay or want to uh, to become members of, on our club uh, that we can revert this money uh, on their um, and now I'm missing the word um, yeah no, or, or, or on their fee yeah on that yeah yeah okay so um, as far as I know there's nothing written about how much money you can charge or not for the speechcraft it's written that you can actually charge for the speech club. So there is a, it's something you are allowed to do. Um, yes, you you say I understand your 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 what you say about five years being not too much, and that that could be considered as uh, as a not good training or something like that. Uh, yeah, what we thought is the annual fee for those masters is 90 euros. Mm -hmm. That's not much um, if, if we think about it. And we didn't want to charge a lot of money. So it was more of um, uh, we, we were charging for us not to have a cost more than to charge something and also because um, it was some 
kind of symbolic, you know. We know that is not a lot of money, but on the other hand, if you pay five euros, you will be more prone to come to the sessions and don't develop uh, pereza, I don't know. I don't know if this makes sense, but otherwise, yes, I believe you can do whatever you, it, it's good for you. What you say, that's a good option. Thank you very much, Christina. You're welcome. Uh, let me try to pronounce your name. Kurt? <laughs> <laughs> well, almost good, I would say. It's Kurt, but uh, that, that's fine. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for this for this introduction into speechcraft. It was actually I was sort of fascinated by the name, so I was like, "Wow, well, let me figure out what it means and what it is about." So now that is at least what you achieved today already, okay. and I see clearly opportunities for this and also in our club. But I was wondering, uh, I understand sort of the, the mechanics, but the person who is sort of leading the initiative or or launching it, uh, can this be anyone in the club, or should this be someone who is maybe has completed at least uh, two pathways and, uh, and and 25 levels or, or no, so no 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 so the the eligibility needs to be a member in good standing oh okay meaning that anyone in good standing could lead it normally and I'm speaking from my experience, <laughs> not just mine, like my experience, but what I've seen around me in, this, uh, in these years is that usually the people organizing speechcrafts are people with a little bit of experience. Like they have already become um, level five or a pathway master in some cases or in the old programs um some communication silver or gold or you know it's not the basic i am uh level two i want to do a speech craft because of, <laughs> it's usually people a little bit with a little bit more experience and and you, also it's something that is not just organized by one person so one person usually leads the initiative but it's it has to be and I stress this a lot, it has to be a club initiative. So more than three, four, five people of the club needs to be engaged in the initiative. Otherwise, you will not have a, you, you won't have the people that you need for the sessions. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you could maybe have someone with less experience lead the initiative and then have at least a number of more experienced people on board to to make sure that the, that sort of a certain quality of feedback and learning is being achieved no by those guests exactly and another thing that is important and of course in my opinion is not exactly the first thing we think we need to think about but certainly it's a thing we need to think about is the fact that the only person that will receive credit for the speechcraft is the lead organizer. Okay. So, uh, regardless of the persons that they that are in the committee for the speechcraft, the only one that is getting the credit is the the lead organizer. So, if there is someone in your club that are that is desperately seeking the DTM <laughs> and needs this goal this is a chance in my opinion is easier to do a speechcraft than to coach a club it's simpler i mean hmm. yeah yeah well it's, it's a actually not, my, that's, that's not my case i'm just a simple vpn and i'm trying to get some more <laughs> members in our club and we we are we have been successful already but it would be nice to continue this trend for the next uh, months in in the uh, next year and yeah. I was wondering so yeah this is sort of a club initiative but we also work very nicely together in our area where we have three four clubs and I also could imagine this could maybe also be some sort of a, a promotion no you launch maybe not only as one club but in an area or uh... this this makes me wonder and I'm gonna tell you why 
um, you're Agora Almeda, right? In Barcelona. Yes. yes. So uh, imagine that you organize this within your area and you have, let's say, 10 guests. If they want be to become members, to which club they're joining? Well, then the clubs can pitch and they can choose, no? <laughs> well, they can choose, but who is organizing the speech craft? You in Agora Almeda is the one. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see but your point. I see your point. Not, yeah, yeah. It's not exactly um, symmetric. It's if if the organization. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I see. I see your point. But it would be maybe so you can have more outreach. You can reach. You can you can That's get the sure, message yes. across to more people. Maybe people are not interested in the speech craft, but are interested to join a session as a guest and not a regular session. So I mean, it's more like making some noise, and maybe some people like this speech craft ID. Also, maybe on a specific time and location, and and the different clubs in our in our area have different uh, uh, days of the week when they meet. So maybe someone joins and says, "Oh, for me, yes, Thursday yes. lunchtime is perfect." And someone else said, "No, I definitely prefer the Monday." And this this club is, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, more younger people or more, I don't know, has inclus inclusive inclusivity higher on their agenda and all those things. So. Uh, Yes, yes. Okay. If it works for your area, that's that's. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it will work for her, but I was just sort of <laughs> thinking. Yeah, okay. It's good, good for me, but hmm. just in pointing the potential issues that you may have in case everybody becomes interested in joining, and then you have a problem in to which club do I address them? Right. Yeah, I see. that could be an issue. Um, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. So, Lady, you have another question? Yeah, I have another question. Uh, so, from your experience, what are the challenges that the speaker up coordinator and the club will face uh, when they coordinate a speaker up program? Um, interesting. So, I have to say that I was really um, surprised because when we organized one speech class in my club, we didn't have any, it, it all went so smoothly and so well that I was really surprised uh, at that moment. Mm, what problems can, well, if you are not able to engage the sufficient amount of people, you may face problems to fulfill the roles that you need. So you need to make sure that you will have the amount of people that you need for every single session. In our case, we did the agendas before we started the program. And when I say the agendas, we did the four agendas of the four sessions before we started the program. So everybody knew exactly what they have to do, when, uh, how, and what. <laughs> yeah. That was, for me, that's what I uh, provided the people in, in my team. And that's what we, we got. It, it went really smooth because it was organized to the millimeter from the beginning. But in other cases, you may, you may of course, face this problem of not having enough people or having to solve any last minute issues, <laughs> you know, we are getting used to solving last minute issues these days. Uh, anything regarding technology, the cam fails in the last minute, the internet connection is not a stable, you know, these type of things, but these things happen. So if you have a, a clear agenda and a backup for every role, so if the Toastmasters can make it who is going to be the Toastmasters? But like I say, as it is your regular club, it's quite easy because you already have the, the numbers of the people, you can get in touch with them, you can um, meet a little bit before the session starts to, uh, to prepare a little bit the program. So, like yeah. in any other session, I mean, everything and nothing yeah. can 
Tango Road. Yeah. Right. Uh, talking about the roads, um, so you said that in the meeting, then the guests will play the role of speaker and evaluator, right? And the other roles will be um, taken over by the other Toastmaster. By members of the club, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Angelo. Hello, Christina. How are you? Thank you for your clarification. I have here adults. Uh, regarding the lack of resources, resources that some clubs have now because of the uh, out of members, is it possible to make a program like this with fewer members, like three or four? You mean with um, members from Toastmasters who are already Toastmasters? Uh, is it possible? Mm. It's complicated. It is complicated. My suggestion in this case would be to try to gather Toastmasters from other clubs who can help you. Because, I mean, exactly like in a regular meeting, you can skip the role of grammarian, for instance, as long as you have an accounter, <laughs> but you will certainly need a general evaluator. You will certainly need a speech evaluator. Of course, if you're a superman, you can evaluate all of the speeches in a session, but ideally, that's not the point. So yes, you can, but I would suggest you to, to look for other people in other clubs. Yeah. Yes, any more questions? No? <laughs> I'm going to act like, <laughs> like a, the, oh, another one, Soleil. You're <laughs> I have one more question. So you said in your club, you you have, uh, you had uh, six guests, um, but uh, yeah, as far as I know that speaker up program, they allowed like five guests, right? How do you manage that? Sorry? So uh, as far as I know, um, in, in the speak rap program, they have only five slots for the speak um, for, for the guest. Um, but you said, if, oh no, no? No. You can add as many as you like. Okay. Um, yeah, like like in the um, in the in the digital bundle, I think that is for five five um, users. But you can talk to Toastmasters and you can add as many as you like. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any more questions? No? I'm going to do like, <laughs> like in the past, not having any questions. <laughs> I consider this approved and uh, adjourned <laughs> the meeting until the next one. <laughs> so thank you very much for joining me today. I know it's a weird hour of a gray and rainy, well, snow here Sunday, but I wish you the best for your speech crafts and let me know how it goes when you implement it in your clubs. Let's speech craft the Toastmasters world. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.